What's up, everybody? Brett Okamoto from ESPN joined today by UFC middleweight Derek Brunson coming fresh off of a big win this weekend in Las Vegas at UFC Fight Night. The main event wasn't supposed to be the main event, but it got moved to the main event. Why not, man, right? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it was such a crazy buildup to this fight. You had, what, three dates? three different dates for this fight and then you might as well make it a main event instead of a co-main event um here in las vegas how was the uh, the entire experience of this fight man yeah it was crazy this was like the third time the fight was booked uh technically it could have been the fourth uh we was looking at fighting earlier in raleigh also but yeah um it was a crazy camp you know with the, with the covid and everything going on but um we got through it and, and feeling good about the results yeah, so right off the bat, you know, crazy camp, and uh, not only was it long, but uh, you, you train at, at Sanford, right, in, uh, in in Florida, and and they've they've had a little bit of uh, some problems there, right? I mean, they've had some positive tests, they've had, and they're they're connected to a medical facility. I mean, they're sponsored by a medical facility, but it just shows how you know problematic this COVID thing has been, particularly in Florida. So, how did that impact your preparations? That not only were you, you know, your date was constantly being moved, but, you know, you had an outbreak in the gym, essentially. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, yeah, we were lacking training partners, coaches. I mean, like, two or three of the coaches got the COVID. Like, yeah. probably, like, six or seven of the training, uh, training partners got COVID. Uh, my strength and conditioning coach got COVID, you know, or, or his – a situation with COVID affected him that he wasn't able to be in the gym. So like messed up my whole strength and conditioning for the camp. So yeah, it, it was definitely crazy. You know, these are, are some crazy times, but everybody took the proper precautions and they stayed away until they was able to get another test and become negative and, you know, it, it worked out, you know, I got tested three times and everything positive. So. Huh. How, uh, how long were you in Florida? Like when did you go down there initially? I was in Florida for four weeks, so uh, five weeks I was away from home, so you had a week for the fight in Vegas, so four weeks before that. So I was down there for four weeks, and I was just there the whole time. You know, it was a whole bunch of train two to three times a day, go straight back to the room, order Uber Eats. They drop it on the doorstep, play some video games, repeat. You know, it was, it was getting kind of boring, but, you know, those were the sacrifices it needed to have a successful fight. And that is kind of training camp life anyway, right? Is that you just train and go home and, and hang out. But, um, you know, in particularly with this one, I mean, were you, were you going stir crazy? And I mean, you're, you're without your family and you, you like, like, and then your coaches are, are, are testing positive for it. I mean, was it, was it, a, was it more challenging fight camp? Is that, is that fair to say? Oh yeah, it's definitely more challenging. And it was definitely stir crazy. You know, typically, we can go after training and grab lunch with the teammates and stuff like that, sit down somewhere, chill out, kick it. But it was limited to in that aspect that, you know, a lot of places was uh, limited on the seating. They were closed down. They were just, you know, take out only. So, and it was also more of being smart, you know, wearing your face mask, going straight back. So you're not in contact with a lot of people. So it doesn't jeopardize the fight because like I said, we, we had a lot of people within our training room, that had the COVID, you know, so it was just, you know, had to be really smart. You know, I had hand sanitizer in my pocket at all times, took a shower instantly, put hand sanitizer in my nose to kill the uh, oh, wow. COVID in my, in my nose hairs. So, <laughs> Hey, do me a favor before we keep going, uh, your fingers sort of over the left. Gotcha. Side. There, you go. there you go. Were you apprehensive about going to Florida? Like, was it getting bad already to the point where like, did you consider not going for this camp? I thought about it. I thought about not going to Florida, but then I was like, ah, that probably wouldn't be the best. You know, I've had so much. I had, you know, my last two fights here. I was in great shape. I was tested before I got out into the, into the fight, and it was all predicated off going to Florida. So I was like, okay, you know, we just got to sacrifice. We just got to trust. And, yeah, I made a trip down there. But, yeah, I, I definitely thought about it, you know, especially with before I went, I think Gilbert had a, uh, positive test and I was like oh man you know so but yeah I, I went ahead and decided and just took precautions needed. Huh. So as your training partners are starting to uh, not be able to come to the gym and your coaches are, are not being able to come to the gym like who are you even training with? Uh, I mean uh, Henry th thankfully has, has not tested positive right and he was in your corner this weekend but what was it, I mean how did it impact like the actual people around you? Yeah so we the team is large so whereas I missed a lot of people I normally train with, we got people to step in and to give you a good look, you know. Mm -hmm. So the team is really big. Um, 
they were doing smart things as doing like small groups at a time. So it'll be, you know, big guys, little guys class, opposed to just like 50 people on the mats at all times. They were breaking it down to like six or seven, you know, um, and keeping small groups. And yeah, Henry been all over and he'd been with coaches that had the COVID, but yeah, he, he kept himself free of it. He got tested probably like 15 to 20 times already because he had a corner like every weekend. Yeah. Good immune system one, Henry Hooft, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, I mean, obviously a big win over Edmund Shabazi in, in the main event. You, you know, were you able to, to celebrate at all? I mean, talk about the weekend just in terms of being in Vegas. I mean, I live here. Uh, things are not closed down, but, you know, a lot of people don't want to go out. So you win a big fight here in Vegas. What do you do that, that night to celebrate? I me, mean, I always celebrate. I go get me a, a soda because I don't drink sodas. I have like, I don't know, maybe like five a year. So I went and got me a soda, sat down in the room. And just chill, you know, that's that's celebrating to me, you know. The, the training camps are so long, take a lot out of you. This sport is like any other sport, you know. I've played football, you know, I've ran track, I wrestled. But MMA, it's like, you know, the weight cut from fighting, you're like 100% at all times or like you're engaged 100% of the time when you're talking about an MMA fight. If you're talking basketball, you can go down and take a possession off mm -hmm. on football, you know, you can kind of run for two yards. But – you're going like 100% every time, so you have to be engaged. So celebrating to me is just winning my fight and just sitting down like, wow, okay. We, we did exactly what we expected to do. A soda, really, that's it. You go back to your hotel room and what kind of soda? Man, a uh, Sprite, a Sprite, you know, <laughs> dump night nothing crazy, it's a Sprite, you know. Like I said, I'm not a soda drinker, but I'll get a little wild every now and then. With the soda, huh, huh. <laughs> and then you flew back to North Carolina on Sunday? Yeah, flew back to North Carolina on Sunday and here now, just trying to get back settled in and catch up on some things that I kind of put everything off to the side until a fight is over. And then I have like 30 to 40 tasks to do right afterwards. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I don't need to tell you this. The big sort of narrative going into this fight was more about him other than you. You know, it was, it was more about this was a big opportunity for him to show that he could beat a veteran like yourself. You know, there was a lot of hype around him. Um, and you said something at the press conference afterwards that sort of uh, I wanted you to expand on. You said that you just stopped, completely stopped looking at your social media the week of the fight. Like, can, can, you, can you talk about what that's like to be in your position and you open up your social media? What kind of things are you seeing on there? Yeah, man, I, I learned, I've been like, I've been in the game for a while, but I learned that a long time ago is during the week is not a time to gain fans or try to read messages because you're going to hear some like, great things in support of you. Then you're going to hear some things like people telling you you're going to get your head knocked into bars. You know, you're going to get slept. You know, you're going to get just concussed majorly. So um, I learned real quick, you know, it's a whole bunch of opinions floating around. So during fight week is not the time. I mean, I probably had about, I don't know, I would say 20,000 messages between all my social medias and, you know, like I said, I, I don't read those things. I save them to after the fight. Sometimes I kind of look like halfway out of my phone trying to see what I can see, seeing if it's something, you know, reading the first word or something like that. But, yeah, I, I don't engage in social media. I just kind of post and get off. Huh. And you do go back and read them after the fight, though. I do go back and read them, and I want to troll a lot of people. But, you know, I just don't have time. I got so many tasks that I put off that I don't have enough time. But the troll would be major, you know, because everybody went from – um, you're going to get killed. This is a setup, you know, um, like you're just going to get beat back to a man. Now you're in our gatekeeper. Now you're a title contender, you know? So it's crazy how things change in MMA, but at the same time, I just kind of take it for what it is. And I just keep working to achieve what I need to. Yeah. And veterans like yourself know that, you know, they know that the, that the fan base can be fickle and that, you know, they'll say one thing and they'll say a completely different thing the very next day. But is it still hard, like even with that experience to not let it get to you? Like, like to, when you hear people talking about like the betting odds and, you know, this guy's going to, you know, knock you out and, and throw you in, out, out of the octagon and things like, like, is it hard to not wonder if they're right? Like, like, is that difficult sometimes to not let it get to you? It's pretty, it's pretty normal to, you know, to, acknowledge it and let it get to you. That's why I try, I don't engage in it. And yeah, I, I like to bet, you know, I bet, you know, I do these little parlays and stuff like that. So yeah, you definitely see minus 300, you're like, man, are these guys right? I mean, uh -huh. what's going on? I can't be like minus or, or plus 180. I mean, damn, like minus 300, just, just, I mean, plus 300 is totally disrespectful, you know? So, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I know how this game go. Um, on paper, it looked really good for him and, 
Huh. Yeah, we go out and party. Did you uh, did you throw any money on on yourself? Throw a little money on the, on the plus money. That's plus what, ain't no Pete Rose over here. No? Uh, that's what I. Do. <laughs> I don't bet. I don't. I will not. I don't bet on myself, and I don't bet on my teammates. Like if I do a parlay with my teammates, I might put pick them winning. Like like I do the rounds or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I stay away from that. Well, you mentioned uh, that some people were saying it was a setup fight. You know, one thing that I think people didn't know about this one, and I feel like it was out there, and then maybe just the fight took so long to happen because of the COVID circumstances that they may have forgot it. But you asked for this fight, right? I mean, this was actually a fight that, that, that you kind of put up your hand that you wanted to face Edmund Shabazzian, if I'm remembering correctly. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, I mean, it was, it was brought to me, you know, and I was like, yeah, I, I asked for it. Yeah, I was like, I, I was 100% with it, you know. Um, nobody wanted to fight the guy, a tough challenge. He was looking good in, in his other fights. And the, what he did to a Brad Tavares, who was really good, uh, people were really starting to believe. And, you know, he was believing, you know. So, yeah, I was definitely all for the fight. Hmm. When you were in there with him, I mean, obviously the fight went your way. Did, did, you, did you kind of uh, – do you see why people were so high on him? Or had, after having been in there with him, do you think he's maybe – and this is no disrespect. I mean, he's very young. He can still have a great career. But – I mean, you, you tell me, like, if I'm, if I'm an analyst for ESPN, should I keep saying that this guy is a future in the middleweight division? Or is, is he, he not really something different that you had seen before? Let me tell you this, is that I've been in with a lot of people, and I think he was everything he was, he was cut out. Uh, I, think, I think the ring experience might have made the difference, but I've been in there with Whitaker. I mean, I was looking at some, like, highlights of the Whitaker fight, and I was hurting him bad. And the thing in that fight is I gassed myself. I was too overzealous. But Whitaker wasn't able to hit me from the outside. Like, this kid was actually in the pocket trading. He was landing. He was touching the body. I remember rewinding back and thinking about the Whitaker fight. He was missing big. Like, the only time he touched me when I was tired, uh, mm. when I fought Israel, he didn't hit me until I shot in. He caught me with a knee. But I had him against the cage. You know, I was controlling the fight. This kid was coming forward, and he was landing shots. So, no, no, no. I think for sure – just with his striking ability. And I saw him thinking too, and I was thinking back on the fight, me and my corner was like, man, he was going to the body early. He was thinking he was going to the body so he can just work to the head. You know, mm -hmm. he's, he, he has great high kicks. He was trying to get me to drop my hands and then go to the head. And mm -hmm. also he was trying to slow me down with the body shot. So the, the, the kid is smart. I uh, thought they had a very good game plan. I think I was just a little bit more on that night and, the swinging point was late in that second round when I was able to land the, the elbow in the round of pound in the last 20 seconds of the round and, yeah. and really fight. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people, you know, I saw this, um, this kind of topic after the fight, you know, people were talking about, well, is Derek Brunson underrated? You know, like the, the betting line sort of was maybe disrespectful looking back on it in hindsight. And, uh, you know, everyone thought that, that Shabazz, everyone was talking about Shabazzian, you know, is, is Derek Brunson underrated? And, and when I look at your record, I mean, a lot of people thought you beat Anderson Silva. And had you won that fight, you won 11 fights out of your last 14. But I think, um, I think the one thing that has been uh, a detriment to you is that when you have lost, it's been quick, right? It's been in that first opening round. Do you, what do you attribute that to you? Do you think that that's like, like are you, have you like, uh, like fast starter, slow starter kind of issues? You, I know you mentioned the game plan when you were talking about the Israel Desenia fight. What, what do you, why do you think that those particular fights that you lost just happened to, you happen to lose them quick? I think it's, you know, the crazy part about it is not to take anything away from anybody that I fought, but I beat myself. If you go and look at every single one of those fights, I completely, like Whitaker, I rocked him like silly. And I just completely kept pressing, pressing, pressing and gassed myself. And then he took over. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing with Israel is, I pressed him against the cage. Um, I hit him with a left. I pressed him against the cage again. My finger got caught on his uh, on his shorts, trying to keep him back on the cage. And he, he grabbed my shorts, and Herb broke the position. And we got back out. He broke us, and I shot in instantly just to put him back against the cage, and he needed me. Hmm. I mean, it's just all off my overzealousness. If I would have fought all my fights like I fought this previous fight, man, I meant – I don't see, I don't see, I don't see a lot of losses there. I mean, I really don't. So um, it's more predicated off me, but you know, I, I realize that now and I'm really making those adjustments. So I think going forward, it'd be really good. Out of the losses that you've had in the UFC, which one would you want to avenge the most? And forget the belt, because I'm sure automatically it'd be Israel because you want to be a champion. But let's say, you know, all of them are champion or none of them are champion. Take the belt out of it. 
Which one would, would you want to avenge the most? Probably the one that mean the most is is maybe the Whitaker fight. You know, uh, I know, I guess I was beating I was beating Whitaker pretty good. You know, he was he turned around and ran from me in the fight. I mean, this guy turned around and like a full forty yard dash and ran from me. I was just putting it on him. You know, and he turned around and ran. I was just too aggressive in that fight. Um, I was gonna and, say you ran you know, right after him when he ran you. Yeah, <laughs> and it, I, I ran right after him. You know. Uh, but just with his accolades and what he was able to achieve, you know, he was, uh, multiple times he defended the belt, was a champion. Uh, I would like to, I would like to, I would like to get that fight back for sure. You know, he has a, a lot of name recognition, um, have some great wins, and just was able to do great things. Well, what is the plan right now? Because if anything, you know, what we've seen during this um, COVID pandemic is that if guys want to fight, like they're 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 kind of able to get fights. You know, I mean, Whitaker turned around and got a fight right away. Um, you know, if you're, if you're here and you're available and you can come back to the apex, I mean, I think the UFC is, is open to giving guys fights, right? So, um, when you look at the rankings and you look at sort of what's coming up on your schedule, what do you think makes sense? I think really the fight that I really want is that number four, uh, Jack Hermanson. I think that's a fight that really makes sense. Um, I jammed up my finger a little bit, so I'll need like a couple months, you know, but I, I really like that fight. I'm even open to, uh, a Cannoneer fight if Whitaker gets injured. I'm open to a Whitaker fight if uh, Cannoneer gets injured. So, uh, and also Darren Till. I know he had an injury. If he wants to sit for a little bit, I got a little, I jammed my finger up a little bit. I can wait a little bit also. So those are the fights, you know, guys with big names that's ranked ahead of me, you know, that's in that top five that can do a lot for me. You know, I'm, I'm really trying to move forward. Well, before we let you go, what's what's up with the finger? You got to get it checked out, or does it just need a little bit of time? What, what's, uh, just a little bit of time. When I was punching, I like jammed it. Like I bust up my knuckles a little bit, and then I punched the I punched and I like jam my finger without like tucking my thumb in. But it's yeah, it's nothing crazy. It's a little jammed up, and it should be good in like I don't know a, a week and a half, two weeks. Cool. Well, uh, I appreciate the time, man, and congratulations on not only the win, but uh, I mean, it's, this situation has happened to a few people this year. A long, long fight camp and a long wait to get to the fight. I'm glad it went off without a hitch, and congratulations on, uh, on picking up a really big win. And thank you for the time, Derek. All right, thank you. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.